Okay, in this video, we're going to have a look at prototyping and product development, and I'm shooting this video in my workshop. Now, I've said many times, if you see somebody having a problem and you have a solution, make a prototype, build it up, give it to that person for proof of concept. He could give you feedback and you could improve on the product. Now, I've done a lot of product development, and I built a lot of circuit boards, and I made a lot of videos on how you could build your own prototyping circuit board to build up a circuit and put it into an enclosure. Now for enclosures, the best place to go is Hammond Manufacturing. They have all types and sizes of enclosures. Here's a plastic one, you get it in different sizes. And you can get extruded aluminum like this one. But sometimes I run across, I cannot find an enclosure that will fit my needs. So an option would be 3D printing, but I didn't go that route. I went to TIG welding. So this is a TIG welder. You've probably seen uh, TIG welding on motorcycle frames or automobile exhaust systems. You've seen the precise TIG welding. So I could build up my own enclosure with, a, with, a, with this TIG welder. So this is the torch, and this is the tungsten rod, the T for tungsten in TIG. And inside this torch handle, there's a copper cable that's connected to the tungsten rod. And there's a hose in here with argon gas that flows into this cup. So when I'm welding, I'm drawing an arc and I've got a little, i got an aluminum puddle, molten puddle, and I'm moving it along. And I, every once in a while I give it filler rod. Now the gas that's coming out of here is creating a cloud around my weld, which is displace, displacing the oxygen, so I'm not oxidizing my weld. If I oxidize my weld, it will, it will be contaminated, it won't, it won't uh, be a very good weld. And so I just move along precisely, and I can weld up any type of uh, a project uh, enclosure. Okay, here's a custom enclosure that I had to uh, make myself because I couldn't find anything that would fit. So this was for a project for a crane controller for a railway application. You've probably seen uh, this type of controllers that have the industrial buttons down, down the center. Here's a picture similar to this. So this is made out of aluminum. So it's a piece of aluminum bent like a U-shaped with end caps welded on each end and then the lid put down. And if you notice there are no screws there's nothing holding this on. This is a precision press fit lid. So here's where I welded, TIG welded the end caps on either side and down the edge. And there's no way I could take this apart. I could grab this. I have to pry it off to take it apart. I'll, I'll, I'll take it apart later. But that's one of the projects that I had to do. I had to build using my TIG welder. Okay, I pried the lid off my enclosure. So this is the inside of it. And you can see the two end caps, which are welded on, and this part is bent over, so the lid fits down. It's a U-shaped lid. Here's the lid. It's just U-shaped, and it press fits onto the box. Now, if I take a square, and if you look at it, it's not square. The end caps are V-shaped, so they're V-shaped on both sides. So now when I, I put the lid on, it presses down into that V, and it, the more I press, the tighter it gets. And so it, it press fits, so there's tension all along the edge, and it keeps the lid on tight. Now to start the welding process, we use a foot pedal like the one here. So this plugs into the welder, and to start the welding process, we press down on the foot pedal, and that gives us pre-flow, that gives us argon gas, which is inert gas, to flow into the cup of our torch. To create, to create a cloud. After we get a cloud of argon gas, it's going to start the arc. Now we have control of the arc amperage by pressing it all the way down. That's maximum current, that'll be minimum current. So if we set the amperage for 100 amps max, that'll be 100 amps all the way down, that'll be zero amps. So now as we're welding, we have control of the amperage. Now the problem that I have, I know some TIG welders who are confined to a wheelchair and they don't have the use of their legs, so they cannot use a foot pedal. So this is video I'm making. I'm coming up with a solution where they could control the amperage of the current and the start-stop of the weld without using a foot pedal. Okay, here's my welder, and this is where I plug in my foot pedal, but I won't be needing it, so I unplug it. And in its place, I built a little controller box right here. This will take the place of the foot pedal, and I plug that in the same spot. And you can see it's wireless. I have a lower radio module and I have a SCAM3 board. So now this will control the sequence of the pre-flow of the argon gas 
starting of the arc and controlling the amperage from zero to maximum. It's all done wirelessly and there's no uh, cables uh, connecting uh, between here and the controller. Now you could buy controls that fit onto the torch handle like you could see here. So this is a little switch. So this starts to pre-flow in the arc but it does not control the amperage. It's full amperage when it's down and no amperage when it's up. But you could buy little wheels that fit on here that you could turn that control the amperage but when you're welding you have to keep a constant distance between your tungsten tip and your and your work and if you're trying to adjust the wheels as you're going along you're gonna go up and down you won't have a very good weld so what I'm doing I'm gonna have control over the amperage using my left hand I'm gonna have a controller built into my left hand glove that will control the sequence and the amperage control okay here's my control box that's simulating my foot pedal and there's an array of LEDs on the SCAN3 board that indicates the amperage. LED in the very left indicates this relay is on, which is enabling the solenoid, the gas solenoid, to, to release the argon gas into the torch. So I could turn on the, the gas using my glove. I've got my glove controller. So that's the amount of amperage, and my gas is on. And I can increase the amperage, and I can go full. That's full amperage. I could go down, I can pulse the amperage and I could take it down to stop, release. Okay, I have a radio receiver on tuned to 915 megahertz. That's the LoRa radio frequency. And you can hear the packets being sent from my glove controller when I activate it. I'll do that. There she is. And if you look at, there's an LED, it's a heartbeat LED. That means the packets are okay. Now if I lose communications, this LED will go solid, means there's, there's an error and it's not picking up the glove. So it's fail safe. Everything will shut down. Okay, whenever I build a project, I always write code for two platforms. Now the first one was the microchip PIC microcontroller, which you saw. And this one here is the RP2040, so it's the ARM microcontroller. So I have a little power supply, a USB buck boost power supply. This gives out output voltages of 3.3, 5 volts and 12 volts. It also has a USB to serial converter. So I've got RXTX fed into the RP2040. I have 5 volts fed into the input of the RP2040. The regulator on board right here is feeding out 3.3 volts to power the lower radio module. So I have a push button for testing. So I can send packets. When I press the button, you can hear it. So this is my little uh, setup for testing the code for the RP2040 ARM microcontroller. Okay, if you're really serious about getting a project up and running, you could start here. This is called Fiverr.com. Now on here, there's engineering students and engineers, and they'll take your project. You could just send them a schematic on a piece of paper, and you could see there's a whole bunch of them here, and they'll do anything you want. They'll, they'll do a schematic capture. They'll do a PC board layout. They'll even make the board if you want. So all these people here, they could do it. So you just have to pick one. So we'll pick one. We'll pick this one. And in here, there's the guy that's doing it. There's a little bit about him, about his experiences, what he could do. And there's some examples of what he's done. You could actually uh, maybe even talk to some of the customers. And there's his pricing for, for his uh, PC board layout and schematic capture. So it's a good place to start. It's called Fiverr.com. Give it a try if you think you have a project that's really going to work out for you. Okay, if you have a project that you have been thinking about for a long time, check out Fiverr.com. There might be somebody there to help you out. Of course, the more you do, the less expensive it will be. Now, I've made a couple of videos regarding this subject, and some of them, there was little interest. Even some said it was a waste of time. I don't know, maybe it's not relevant anymore. Maybe I'm just old school. So I've been working on this project. It's pretty time consuming. So I'll be cutting back on my normal videos because I want to get my fellow TIG welders up and running.